tonight for dinner is called, oh crap, I forgot, hold on, Tom Ka Gai, and it is, I don't know if it's Thai, yeah, Thai coconut soup, oh my, okay, we've had this a couple of times, but normally when we have it, one of Alex's brothers comes over with like this packet of stuff, it's like already made, and then you just add vegetables and coconut milk. I don't know where he gets it, but I this is the only recipe I found on Pinterest for it, so it says it's the best, but really it's the only, so we're gonna try our hand at it. You need some chicken broth, coconut milk, fish sauce, you guys know I'm trying to use up all this fish sauce, some garlic, onion, red curry paste, lime, jalapeno, I'm adding in a couple of peppers, mushrooms, I don't know about that, and then some cilantro. So let's get started. Oh, and some chicken. I have some chicken in the little sink right there. Well, the recipe calls for coconut oil. I know I have some. I could keep looking. It's fine. I've already wasted enough time looking for it. It's been like 45 minutes already. I had to look for my tripod and all that good stuff. So um, just some oil. It says half an onion, but I'm doing a full onion. Some ginger slices go in there. It says three half inch pieces, but those aren't half inch pieces. It says a half of a red jalapeno. Well, you guys know I don't read directions very well. I bought a green jalapeno and I sliced up the whole dang thing. Cause what am I gonna do with half a jalapeno? I'm not gonna freeze it. Garlic goes in three cloves, but I did like five. And then add two teaspoons of red curry paste. I always add a little bit more of this because I just feel like it brings so much flavor. And then cook that until the onions are nice and softened. Oh, oh my gosh, you need a close up. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. There, is that better? There, can you see this? This looks beautiful. This is dinner. It smells real strong though, I'm not gonna lie. All right, it's been a few minutes. The onions look a bit soft. So now I'm going to add four cups of chicken broth. Bring this to a boil and then simmer it for 30 minutes and then we'll add the rest. The, oh, I should mention the recipe also calls for lemongrass. I don't have that. Target didn't have it, <laughs> sadly. I've needed it for a few recipes lately, but that's my luck. Okay, it's been 30 minutes and this reduced a whole ton. You're supposed to strain out the aromatics, which is like all of this. I don't have a strainer and like, I don't know what's gonna be left if I strain, if I strain. <gasps> I have cheesecloth. Let me get some cheesecloth. Hold up. I just remember, I just found it in my closet. Well, I can't find my cheesecloth and I'm done looking for it. So I'm just gonna use a kitchen towel and try to get most of the juices out. Pop it in here. Am I ruining this? Oh, I'm gonna do my best. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how else to do it. There's like very little, you know what I mean? It's all stuck to this crap. Use a strainer if you have one, but I donated mine when we moved. Wow, probably gonna burn my hands. Okay, squeeze it. Hopefully a lot of the juices come out. Oh my gosh, it's so hot. Oh, this was a mistake. It's so hot. Ew, <laughs> my hands are burning. <laughs> Let me just try to twist it. Oh, it's so hot. It's burning my fingers. Look at all that juice though. All right, hold on, I'm gonna get a glove. Trying to put a glove on a wet hand is never a great idea. Let's see how much juice comes out of here. This is like a very concentrated, oh my gosh, sauce right here. It's so hot, it's so hot. I think it would have been less time for me to run up to the store and buy a strainer. Okay, well we did that and that is good enough, my friends. And then you add the chicken breast. I have two pretty massive ones just cut up into chunks. Add the veggies. I just cut up a red bell pepper and a yellow be red bell pepper. And then add two cans of coconut milk or coconut cream. And then simmer this and let the chicken cook all the way through for about 10 minutes. This smells absolutely incredible. If you've never had this before, I would highly recommend. I did change my mind and I am going to add some mushrooms. They cook pretty fast and it's not too many. So I feel like the peppers still have a little bit of time to cook. 
Okay, I'm done waiting. I am going to add in one and a half to two tablespoons of fish sauce and then the juice of a whole lime. Wow. All right, let's try to get some juice out of this guy. I guess it's too firm for juice. Oh, I didn't roll it. Oh, that was my mistake. Okay, give this a mix, and I think that's it. Oh no, a little bit of coconut sugar. I don't have that, but I do have some monk fruit sweetener. I don't know, I'm just gonna add some of that. Give that a mix. I'm gonna add a couple limes for fun. Some green onions, and that looks so good, but I'm telling you, it tastes even better. Let's plate it up. Ooh, add some cilantro too. I'm gonna go ahead and say that looks magazine worthy. Um, once you add cilantro on top of it, we eat it with rice. I just plated it as is, just as soup, but it's delicious. I would dare say, hold on, let me take another taste. Yeah, it tastes just as good as like the packet sauce that we buy. And it's, I mean, since I can't find it, this is a great alternative. Plus making everything homemade is normally better for you. Anyway, it's delicious. Hope you enjoy if you make it. This is a normal amount of cilantro, and this is what Alex decided to put. Tonight for dinner, it's an exciting night. Not sure if the dinner is exciting as what's happening. The Bengals just won. Sorry if you're a Kansas City fan. We were really gunning for the Bengals, and holy crap, it was amazing. Overtime again, special teams. Anyway, enough football talk. I am making bang bang shrimp tonight, and I don't know if it's like technic. Okay, so I'm making bang bang like linguine or pasta, if you will. So it's not, we're not gonna bread this in panko crumbs because I feel like that's just an added step I don't want to deal with. When I saw this recipe, that was the big allure for me. So I have some shrimp. I have some limes, I have garlic, garlic powder, um, sweet red chili sauce, mayonnaise. I don't know if I need arrowroot powder. I saw some recipes that needed it, but I can't remember like what recipes I was looking at, so I'm gonna have to, whatever. I took it out anyway. And then some cayenne pepper. I bought this specifically for this recipe. I feel like I always need stuff with cayenne pepper and I never have it. Uh, I actually looked for it for 20 minutes in my pantry. Guess where it was? the first place I looked. That's right, unbelievable. Let's get this thing started. Let's get it started. Hey. I have some gluten-free pasta stirring away. Not that you could see literally anything. I think it's done. So I'm just gonna drain it. I have two boxes. You only need one box, but I like to have leftovers and my kids like to eat spaghetti for lunch and stuff, so I made two boxes. I'm just gonna throw it back in the pot so it stays warm. <laughs> But to make sure that it doesn't stick together. Actually, I don't know if gluten-free spaghetti will stick together. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't want to test my luck. So I just add a little bit of oil or butter if you want, and then I just mix it around. Keep the top on. Keep it off the heat. Cross our fingers. So let's throw together the sauce, and then we're gonna cook up the shrimp. The shrimp cooks very quickly. Um, this is likely a 20-minute dinner idea. It calls for a quarter cup of mayonnaise. I think we're there, but I'm just gonna use whatever's left in this jar. I just find it so satisfying when I can completely empty a jar. Equal parts mayonnaise and sweet red chili sauce, so I'm gonna go above and beyond with this too. Let's keep on that, the more the merrier theme. It calls for two cloves of garlic, but I have four cloves right here, and I'm just gonna use them all. I peeled them the other night for dinner and I just stuck them in a bowl and saved them for right now. Add all of that to la sauce. Give this a mix. And that looks good enough. Looks Actually looks kind of gross. But super simple. Now I'm going to, I think this is, oh it's cooked. Oh I've made a mistake. Oh I've made a mistake. Oh this is cooked too. What have I done? Um okay. It's fine, we're fine. I think this dish might be a little too shallow. Are the tails still on these things? Man, shrimp is pretty gross. Oh, that's a lot of liquid. Actually, these look fantastic. Yeah, these are, these are real good. I'm going to just give them a rinse in the sink. All right, looking real fresh. What do we do now? <laughs> Let's add some salt here. It calls for a half a pound of shrimp 
And this is a full pound, my friends, and that's how I like to live my life. Half a teaspoon of cayenne. Oh my gosh, they don't make this easy to open, do they? Come on, Zach. Everyone's watching. Oh my gosh, you'd think they give you a little lip or something. Here we are, banging on all cylinders here. I think it said half a teaspoon of this? Let me see here. Oh, one, no, no, half a teaspoon. Okay, well, we are beyond that. One teaspoon of garlic powder. A little bit more, come on. A little faster. Is that it? Wow, that's it? Well, let's give this a stir. Make sure everything's nice and coated in the seasonings. I feel like it needs a little more salt to compensate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let's take this deliciousness to the stovetop. I'm gonna get this pan nice and hot. Since my shrimp is already cooked, I just wanna heat it just real quick. You guys know if you're looking for a shrimp alternative, let's say you used to like shrimp cocktail. Is that what it's called when you really like have cold shrimp and you dip it in that cocktail sauce. Anyway, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, maybe you used to eat shrimp and you don't anymore. An alternative to that, try cauliflower. Like frozen cauliflower but thawed and then dip it in that cocktail sauce. Same effect, I tell you. Without the fishy aftertaste. Let's throw this shrimp in. Let that cook for about 30 seconds. Okay, give this a toss. Let this cook for, oh, I don't know, 30 more seconds. Brandy's got the national anthem. Wow. I haven't seen her in, I don't know, 20 years. I'm gonna cut up, oh gosh, it's the national anthem. Mushrooms? Man, she still got it. Her rendition of Cinderella is still one of my all-time favorites. Okay, I'm just gonna chop up some green onions. I have my shrimp off of the heat for now. I'm also going to cut up some cilantro too, it says. I think a quarter cup of each, but we really like cilantro here, so I don't know. I always do a bit more of everything, I guess. Don't forget the stems, man. Cilantro stems hold so much flavor. Okay. Look at those shrimps. Slightly overcooked. Can't wait to eat them. Let's get a little shot for the gram. Okay, bringing this back to the stove. Let's take it to the stove. I think at this point, what do we do, what do we do? Let's add Dan Noodlin here. So eight ounces go right in. Man, gluten-free spaghetti. It's not it, but it's better than nothing. Then you just dump the sauce right on top. Bang, bang into your room. Then we add some lime juice and, oh, hold up. And that's as much juice as I can get with my left hand because it's so dang weak. Let's try that again. Yeah, I'm just weak with both hands. <laughs> The juice of one lime goes in, but I feel like if you're feeling up to it, maybe add two, okay? I love citrus. You guys know I feel like fresh herbs, fresh citrus, they really elevate every dish. Use it as much as you possibly can. In addition to the herb garden that I eventually want to grow, if I could grow some limes and lemons, my neighbor growing up had lemons, so I know it's possible. I'll be like halfway on my way to my own dang homestead. <laughs> Being self-sufficient. Self-sufficient Kimberly Whisk. Okay, well this looks uh, like it needs some color, maybe a vegetable. That was an oversight, I definitely didn't make a vegetable. Maybe the green onions will suffice. Let's just throw those on. And then of course the cilantro. Let's throw that on too. Give this a nice toss. And dinner is served. That took way less than 20 minutes. Oh, all the cuts in my hands are burning. This is amazing. Yes, 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 yes again, I love it. I'd love to eat some bang bang shrimp. Never had it in like, you know, made by someone else, but I made bang bang cauliflower one time at a football 
appetizer recipe video, oh my gosh, heaven. Okay, a little gourmet. This is what brings it to the next level. Should I spread them out over here? What should I do? One lime, two limes. I feel like three is the best. Yeah, that's good. A little more green onion. And here's dinner. Let's get it in our holes. When I tell you this was delicious, I'm telling you, this was delicious. Alex ate so much of it. It was a little on the spicy side, obviously, because I put a ton of cayenne pepper on there, but it was gourmet, restaurant quality, all that good stuff. Another day, another dinner, and tonight I'm making the best chicken teriyaki. I just wrote down the recipe from Pinterest, and you guys know my last What's For Dinner video, oh my gosh, I made the most incredible sesame chicken. I swear, it's one of my all-time favorite recipes of all time. Only had it twice in my life. Wish I've had it more. But I figure it's always good to try new recipes. You gotta try new foods because they might be good. Here's what you need for this one. You need rice wine vinegar, which is actually not in the recipe, but it's in the video. I don't know. Pinterest is getting crazy and weird. So I don't think this is right. I'm gonna have to Google that. But you will need some sesame oil, soy sauce or cocoa aminos, some garlic, brown sugar, honey, which is like always a great combo. <gasps> we need some ginger. I need to find my fresh ginger. I gotta go to my garden for that. And then some cornstarch. Let me get the ginger. Okay, I found some ginger. Ginger looks so weird, doesn't it? All right, let's get this thing all whipped up. So we're going to start out with a third cup of soy sauce or cocoa aminos. Oh my gosh, how do I get the top off of this thing? One third cup, looking more like a half. Oh, I don't really love this brand. Where did this come from? Hmm, yeah, this is not my favorite brand. Nope. A little bit of sesame oil. It says a teaspoon, I'm gonna add like a tablespoon. So apparently mirin is sweeter than rice wine vinegar. So rice wine vinegar would add like acidity and this just adds sweetness and we're already adding sweetness. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. I'm sure I could throw some distilled white vinegar. Oh, you, you know what I have? Hold up. You guys know how much I love apple cider vinegar. So I'll add how much? Oh, it didn't even say cause it wasn't in the original recipe. Just a little bit. Now we're getting all kinds of crazy. One third cup of brown sugar. So just a few big, spoonfuls and one tablespoon of honey do a little more because that's my vibe one to two tablespoons of cornstarch oh my gosh what's wrong with this garlic this is like hollow <gasps> oh it's bad oh man what am i to do i'm gonna go crazy all right i have some more oh my gosh this is bad too <gasps> it's all bad all right let me see if i can find more Okay, I found some good stuff. How many cloves? I think it says four, but we'll add more. Four is never enough. And as for the ginger, I'll just snap off a little piece. You wanna add enough so there's flavor, but not too much because this stuff is crazy overpowering. To peel the skin off, you can just use uh, a spoon or whatever, but I have this knife. It's a little paring knife. Oh my gosh, man, this stuff is so potent. This will clear out your sinuses. Ginger is actually really great for your body. But if you don't have the fresh stuff, you can, uh, you know, use the powder. It's gonna crush the garlic so it's easier to peel. I know people do this different ways. You can, you know, put it in a jar and give it a shaky shake. Oh man, garlic and ginger. Does it get any better? You know what, it does. If you add that five spice <laughs> that we found, a couple weeks ago. Now that stuff is really amazing and I feel like if I was making this just for funsies for me, I would definitely add that to this recipe. But you know, I'm trying to make the world's best for you. I'm gonna chop all these up using a little chopper. Man, I just think this thing is so cool and efficient. I actually have a little chopper but I can't find the blades to it and this thing always comes in handy when I need it. Of course you can do this by hand. I've never done it with ginger before, so this will be interesting. <sighs> nope, that won't work. <sighs> Maybe my piece was too big. Let's try it again. <sighs> nope, still not working. <laughs> Kinda worked. Mostly didn't. Mostly got stuck. Oh man, I forgot to put this thing back. Oh girl. 
Yeah, that's not gonna be fun to clean because now it's all stuck in the grates. What did I do? Why are you the way that you are? All right, whatever, I'm just gonna have to cut it by hand. The garlic in though. Oh, wait, you know what I'm gonna do? Ooh, I was about to get real upset because I can't find anything. Because people have been putting dishes away, which is awesome, thank you so much, but they don't put them away where anywhere where I can find them. So I'm gonna use my microplane to just do the um, ginger. Oh, you know what, someone told me, I don't really believe them, but let's try it out. You don't have to skin the garlic before you microplane it. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> the skin's going everywhere. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. I'm not at that level. That actually smells fantastic. I think that's it. Now let's just give it a mix. Oh, nope, that's not it. Ha 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 ha. You need half a cup of water. This is just my drinking water and I feel like that's good enough. And then I'm going to add the chicken breast. I just cut, oh no, they're thighs. I cut up, I don't know, a packet. It's probably close to two pounds. It's gonna mix all of that in. Mm, it actually smells really delicious. Let this marinate probably as long as you can, overnight if you want to, a couple hours if you don't have the time. At least, at the very least, 30 minutes. I'm gonna pop a top on it, put it in the fridge. Time to eat. I have some rice in the Instant Pot and it's gonna be super simple tonight. Maybe you get some frozen broccoli in the microwave. I'm just gonna throw maybe a little bit more oil because I do have a lot of chicken here. I've been heating my pan up and you're supposed to drain the juices and just, oh wow, yeah, that's gonna take way too long. And here's where I use my hands and everyone gets grossed out. It's fine. <laughs> that's what soap and water is for, okay? It's about being efficient. Just throw all the chicken on there. I would say don't overcrowd it, but I'm definitely not gonna do two batches. Just spread it out and then let it, let it cook. I just did the worst thing I could possibly do. I just cleaned out the pan. I could have just made a sauce real quick. Man, whatever, that happens. Just cook the chicken. The best chicken teriyaki in town. While it's steaming in there, I'm just gonna add a few sesame seeds, sprinkle them. Oh, that's a lot, right on top. And then mix them in. I would say that elevates the dish a bit. This is definitely a like, do what I say, not what I do type of moment. Save the sauce, put it in the pan. After you're done cooking the chicken, let it cook out, and then you have a delicious sauce. Okay, the chicken is complete. It does taste delicious, although I will say, I do prefer the sesame chicken that we made a couple of weeks ago. It just has so much more flavor than this. This is good. This is good. There it is, nice and delicious. Uh, everyone will enjoy this because I'll make them. But, you know, if you don't have the five spice and stuff, this is great. You know what, I'm gonna take another taste. I'm jaded. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, it's really good. <laughs> oh, you guys, I'm so frustrated. I was so distracted because like kids and stuff. Um, I just deleted the intro to this. Oh my gosh, I probably said so much. Okay, yeah, I definitely deleted it. <laughs> I had a young chicken. It was $5.66, somewhere around there. And I'm gonna cook it. I debated sharing it with you because it's not like a gourmet recipe, but I figured this is what you need. Quick, easy, you know, fast, efficient, delicious, weeknight meals, all the catch words, right? Uh, this is the chicken already cooked. You'll see it in the crock pot. This is a crock pot recipe. Um, I will show you me putting it in the crock pot, but you might be thinking, oh, Kim, you bought it for $5.55 or however much it was. Why should I do that when I can go to Costco and get a rotisserie chicken for, I don't know, $5 and it's already cooked for me? Well, I'll tell you two reasons why. I think I had two reasons. First one, you can season it how you like. Second one, it comes out with a lot of broth, so you can make your own uh, gravy with it or whatever, save the broth, whatever, well, whatever you wanna do, okay? Second reason, I don't remember, maybe I'll talk about it, but here we go, let's throw it in the crock pot and I'll show you what to do. My chicken was frozen, I had it in the freezer. Oh, what do you do with the giblets and stuff? <gasps> Are they frozen inside? Man, I just let it 
thaw out in my fridge overnight and for whatever reason that never works for me so this morning I put it in uh, a, my sink with some cold water. We gotta get this stuff out of them. Okay, well this is getting a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> There we go. If you want to eat this stuff, you go right ahead, but I don't. I'm sure it's high in iron or whatever else, but I take my vitamins. It's cool. Okay, I also wanted to mention this chicken is 6.3 pounds. So I don't know how much a chicken weighs from Costco, but I feel like this is bigger. So all you're going to do is season this the way that you like it. It could be as simple as adding salt and pepper. And now I'm wondering like, how should I do this? Should I add some butter? Should I make it gourmet? Oh boy. Well, you know, I got my butter out. I was gonna smear it all inside the skin and stuff, but I feel like I don't want to. I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. Just some oil over the top. This is how I always do it. Just, a co just cover the top, you know what I mean? I'm gonna add the Kinder seasoning. This one has salt, pepper, and garlic in it. Oh my gosh, fancy. For fun, I'll add some poultry seasoning because I have some and there's barely any left, so there's that. And for extra fun, we'll add some Italian seasoning. Oh, doesn't look very cute anymore, does it? Maybe a little bit more oil. Get in the crevices, rub it around, give them a little massage. Maybe throw a little butter inside. Mmm. And then that's it. You don't add any liquid, nothing. Just cover it up. I'm gonna do it on low because I'll be gone all day. And then when I get home, you're gonna see the magic. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness. We're home, just walked in the door. It's been a little while. It's been longer than however long eight hours was. Don't know how long it's been on warm. Maybe a little longer, but do you see all the juices in there? Like this is a big crock pot, you guys, and it's up, it is up there, those juices. It smells good. Looks a little burnt, <laughs> well, that's fine. Uh, so we'll probably just eat this. Rice, green beans, mashed potatoes, make some gravy with the juices. Should we do that? Okay, let's do it. To go with my chicken, I have some green beans. And you guys know my favorite way to cook green beans, just some olive oil. Oh my gosh, speaking of the new tray that I bought, I could not get my other ones clean, you guys. I tried it, I really did. Scrubbed and scrubbed until I said, forget this. Okay, that's plenty of oil. That's like way too much oil, I'm gonna ruin my pan. And then I just throw on, you know, salt and pepper and garlic, or just salt and pepper, because that's what I normally have, but I also have this, so I'm gonna use it. Give it a nice little zhuzh, and throw that in the oven, 425 degrees, I don't know, about 25-ish minutes until they're to your liking. Okay, I made a lot of mistakes over here. I tried to like put the chicken and get a nice crisp on it. It doesn't matter, I threw it in the oven, it's whatever, it's warm. Uh, but the chicken completely broke. It is very tender. I just ripped the bone of the wing off. Um, actually, to say it's tender, is a gross understatement. I mean, everything's just falling apart here. So let me tell you a little story about a girl named Lucky. I'm just kidding. I <laughs> need a strainer so I can strain all these little tidbits out of the nice, lovely juices, right? And I needed one the other day. Was I filming the, the video where I needed one the other day? and didn't have one. And so I was at the store the other day and I thought, oh, maybe I should buy one. And then I talked myself out of it and thought, well, Kim, you you know, when's the, you needed it one time in the last 700 years, you can live without it. So I didn't buy one. And now look at me needing one again. I guess that worked. I don't know. I'm gonna have to dive in and make sure. Yeah, I don't feel any bones in there, which is good. Okay, well, we'll trust that. Oh, I'm. Oh my gosh, you guys, am I having a heck of a time with my camera. I felt around for some bones, didn't feel any. We're good to go. I don't even think I told you what we're making. It kind of smells like Thanksgiving in here. Even though it's a chicken, I don't care. Anything with gravy, mashed potatoes, I'm like, uh, yes. By the way, we are making some mashed potatoes from a box because it's convenient. <laughs> I'm throwing it in the microwave in a bit. But I'm making gravy, did I say that? Gosh, I feel like I've said it five times, but I, who the heck knows, right? 
Gravy always tastes better when it's made from scratch. Is that true? I don't know. Here's what we need. The flour. This is gluten-free flour. I feel like it works the same. It just thickens it up. I'm showing you this because for centuries, I did not know how to make um, gravy from scratch. And then I finally figured it out and I was like, wow, that's so simple. No skill involved at all. Uh, oh, oh my gosh, we've got some water right here. How convenient. It's an eighth cup or so of flour. You guys know I don't measure. And then, you know, the same amount of water. Where's my freakishly small whisk? Here it is. Just whisk it together. That way there aren't any like lumps in your grava. I told Avelina what we were make, what I was making for dinner and she asked, will there be gravy? Anytime there's mashed potatoes, there better be gravy, right? Just pour that in, give it a mix. It'll thicken up. You can add some seasonings if you want. There's plenty in there, I feel like. Bring it to a boil and you're good to go. And there it is, chicken gravy. You can't see a dang thing. Okay, threw it in my gravy boat. Ooh, get on the boat. The banana, the gravy boat. Everyone loves the gravy boat. There's actually so much in here that I have excess, and this holds a lot. Don't let the size fool you, okay? All right, let's eat. Does anyone else save the wishbone and then break it? That's like a good luck thing, right? What's your wish? I'll tell you mine. All right, the sides are done. Ooh, ah, the chicken's done too, but I'm just warming it up a little bit. I just always find it magical when I mix the melted butter in, so I thought I would share that joy with you. Wow, can you even see it, or am I doing really good with my camera work here? Anyway, mashed potatoes. Never looks so good. Here is dinner. All right, I'm trying to figure out how to configure this so you can see it all. And we eat at home a lot, like 99% of the time. And I've said this before, but some way to like elevate your food, this was simple to make, right? No skill involved at all. But it feels fancier to me anyway, because I put it on these random dishes. So if you have any nice dishes, I suggest that you give that a try. And nice is subjective. I mean, this was like four bucks from Home Goods. You found it? That's dinner. It's gonna be delicious. Bon appetit. On the menu tonight, it is cauliflower Alfredo. It's been a really long time since I've made cauliflower Alfredo. It's a dairy-free alternative. Also hidden vegetables, which is always a win. I have gluten-free pasta. I found this at Whole Foods. It is like fancy pasta. I've been to Whole Foods once in my entire life. But I went the other day, so I guess that makes it twice. They had so many like food restriction thing. Like they had so many gluten-free stuff. They had so much dairy-free stuff. It was amazing. So I definitely plan to go back there uh, and deep dive a little deeper. Anyway, tonight we're just gonna have that pasta because it looked really good. I have all oat milk. This ripple milk is really thick and creamy. So I'm gonna use that. Cauliflower, of course. Some garlic. It really makes the sauce taste like true Alfredo sauce. I'm gonna cook up a spaghetti squash because that's what I like as noodles. I'm, I'll just mix it in the normal normal noodles. And then I have some dairy-free Parmesan cheese. This is what's left over from when I made the dairy-free, gluten-free lasagna, which I did not share with you because it was absolutely miserable. But that's what I have left, so I'm gonna use it up. Okay, first thing you do on uh, in a pan, I have some oil, which I didn't tell you that you needed. You need some nice, good quality olive oil. It gives it a nice, rich flavor, and you need quite a bit of it. And I have a whole head of garlic here. I think it's 10 cloves, and those are nice, hearty cloves. Let that sit in the olive oil and just toast up a little bit. While that's cooking on the oven, I just cut up my spaghetti squash, and I'm gonna seed it. Okay, my garlic is getting a little out of hand and nobody likes burnt garlic. I'm just gonna pop it right into the blender, all of the oil and the garlic, and just let that sit there. It's been a while since I made this, so <laughs> I kinda, kinda forgot what to do, but I think I have it. So I've made spaghetti squash a bunch of different ways. This is just my favorite. It's easy, it's convenient, and it works every single time. I just cut it in half, add a little bit of oil, you can do coconut oil or whatever. And then just some salt and pepper and garlic. That's all this is. And I just rub it around. I tried cooking spaghetti squash in the oven, in the Instant Pot. 
I just, this is the best way for me. I just do it upside down and I put it right into the microwave for, I check on it, maybe 15 minutes and then I'll check on it. The star of the show is the sauce. Oh boy. I am going to add a little bit of the seasoning, salt, pepper, garlic in here. I don't have any pepper, otherwise I'd just add pepper, but I don't have. And you work with what you have. I just cooked up this cauliflower in the microwave. You can cook up a head of cauliflower any way that you want and just add it straight to the blender. And then add in some milk. I wish I had quantity for you. Let's start out with a cup. Although I always feel like I end up adding more. I'll blend this up. And depending on how thick or thin you want your sauce, you can add more milk. That's garlicky. <laughs> I'm going to add the cheese and a touch more milk. And let this go. My blender really sucks. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I would do half of the amount of garlic. <laughs> I just realized I used to double this recipe and freeze some. So I would use two bags of cauliflower and then a whole head of garlic. It's not bad, it's just very garlicky. Other than that, fantastic. Super simple, dairy-free, healthy Alfredo sauce. I just seasoned some chicken and threw it on a pan with some oil. That was a last minute choice, and these just came out of the microwave, and I can already tell they're done because they're nice and soft. But I'll show you guys. A spaghetti squash, you can just run your fork through it, and it'll uh, start shredding apart. This is where it gets its name because it looks like spaghetti noodles. So there's that. Um, I'm just gonna flip it over so it stays warm. Mmm, but it tastes so good. Now I'm gonna cook up some broccoli. I actually have two bags. Now I'm gonna throw the pasta in, the water's ready. Look how nice this pasta looks. Like gourmet quality. This is crazy. I mean, this was really expensive, but gluten-free anything is expensive. Am I gonna do two boxes? I guess we'll just do one. And then if we need more, yeah, I think we'll be fine. The noodles, woo! Oh boy, let's try this again. The noodles are done. Ooh, it's definitely not enough, but whatever. That's what I cooked. Yeah, this is like one dish. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to cook some more of that up. All right, let's do some noodle in. I climb. Okay, you wanna climb? All right, what do I add first? This chicken smells so dang good. I used this seasoning on it. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. The steakhouse blend. <laughs> I just realized I put this on the spaghetti squash. Uh, hold on. I'm gonna pour some sauce on and just yummy. mix it in. Yes, so yummy, yummy, huh? That is great. I'm gonna add some chicken in here. Delish. And then a little bit of broccoli for color. Oh my, yes. And here it is, all complete. Fettuccine Alfredo pasta. Dairy-free version. And since I'm right here. I'm gonna go in for a chef's taste test. Little bit of everything. Boon appetit. Very garlicky. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. 10 out of 10. This would be like $18 at a restaurant, right? Especially gluten-free pasta, I'm just saying. An Alfredo dish, even at Chili's, what is it? 16, 22 bucks? Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A little Cajun chicken pasta. All we're missing is some garlic bread. I guess I should call my family in. <laughs> and we have finally reached my favorite part of what's for dinner videos, and that is the dessert. I always try to include a dessert for you guys. Uh, most, a lot of times it's brownies because that's my favorite. I always try to switch it up though. These are, hold on, let me see. I'm listening to a true crime podcast. <laughs> Chocolate covered strawberry cream cheese brownies. Boy, that's a mouthful and I hope they taste as good as they sound. I'm not even a huge fan of 
cream, no, what's it called? Cheesecake, but I don't care. I'm trying it for you. Alex likes cheesecake, so let's do it. Um, powdered sugar, sour cream, cream cheese, chocolate heavy whipping cream, strawberries, and brownies. I've already threw mine together. These are Ghirardelli, the best. <sighs> Someone just came in the front door. <laughs> Best box brownie mix. They sell in the stores, promise you that. So we're gonna make brownies and strawberries and then a ganache. And this will be like the cream, what, gosh, what's it called again? Cheese cake mixture. Is that what we're making? I think so. Okay, so let's, uh, let's cut up some strawberries first, I guess, I don't know. Eight whole ounces of cream cheese, two tablespoons, Oh, that was gross. Of sour cream. It's the lid. I hate sour cream. And a quarter cup of powdered sugar. And I can only find one blade for my attachment. Nah, that's good enough for me. I'm just gonna whip it together. Oh, I love this combo. Now I'm going to take this mixture. Oh, hold on. Man, I feel like I'm ruining the brownies. I hate cheesecake. Just plop it right on top, okay? The brownies are cooled, by the way. Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, great. Next, I'm going to take 12 ounces of chocolate. It's supposed to be dark chocolate. I don't even have 12 ounces. This was an open bag of 10 ounces. That looks really pretty though. I'm gonna take a picture for the gram. I'm gonna melt this. It says to melt it over a double boiler, but ugh, I just don't feel like it. So I'm gonna do it in the microwave. 30 second intervals. Now I'm gonna cut my strawberries. It says to just, uh, you know, cut them in half. Ooh, these are ready to eat. That's not how I like my strawberries. I feel like I just need little pieces of them. I don't wanna be, you know, biting into a hunk and chunk of strawberry. But if that's your thing, you go ahead and do that. You know, for Valentine's Day, Publix was trying to sell strawberries in like a heart-shaped container. Three for 10 bucks. And I thought, that's a good deal. But each heart-shaped container was 10 ounces. And I thought, wait, they normally have a three for 10 on their 16 ounce normal looking containers. And that's exactly what they had. So, you better believe I got the uh, normal rectangular looking container. You know what I mean? Hashtag not worth it. And these strawberries are kind of sad too. Ooh, this one's really nice. <gasps> no! <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm so mad! No, I, oh my gosh, I think I made a mistake. I'm melting the chocolate, but the way you make ganache is by heating up the heavy whipping cream and then pouring it. Oh my gosh, what did I do? Why did I do the, oh, what did I read? Over low heat, heat up heavy whipping cream and chocolate chips? That's not, what? Well, okay, whatever. What's done is done. Uh, I'm gonna just finish the process, I guess. At this point, there's no turning back now. That's life, things happen, and you just gotta roll with the punches, right? So the chocolate is melted, and while it is nice and hot, oh my gosh, there's garbage everywhere. One cup of heavy whipping cream. Did I mess this up? Probably. Should I heat this up first? Probably. But I'm not going to. <laughs> I might throw it back in the microwave for a minute. I'm gonna see what it looks like and if it needs. Oh, you guys. Thought I was making a gourmet treat and then I remembered who I was. All right, I feel like it's working. Looks like it's working. It all comes out just fine, right in the end. There it is. Okay, that looks good. Well, that makes me happy. So. What can we mess up next? So let's do the strawberries over top. Oh my heavens. Anything, here's the thing, I wanted to make strawberry shortcake or some kind of like strawberry cake. Man, I love strawberries, I love chocolate, I love cake. I'll have it all, thank you so much. And then I saw this and I thought, okay, because Alex really likes cheesecake and I never make it because I don't like it. Sometimes you gotta do things you don't wanna do when you're married. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so strawberries on top. Man, that looks good. What? I almost rubbed that in my hair. I need a shower anyway. One more picture for the gram. Do we do this now? I don't know the directions. Three to four minutes, stir until glossy. 
not glossy, but I don't care. Four chocolate mixture over strawberries. Oh my gosh, let it cool for one hour. That's the worst part. All right, here we go. Let's give it a nice drizzle. Pour it over. Hmm. Trying to make it even. Because if you cut it the way that they do, it's like, you know, in half. You cut the strawberries in half. You'd think that this would be a little bit easier, but I make everything difficult, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen that video in a while? Apparently. <laughs> I can't even say it. You guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, I should have saved some strawberries for the top. Well, good thing I have three containers of them. Okay, well, that's good enough, I feel like. Doesn't look nearly as good as what it looked like before it was covered. All right, into the fridge, I guess. Okay. All right, here it is. I already filmed this, but I don't know why like, my camera didn't film. It's so weird. I um, hope there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't look as pretty as it once did because I like came in there with a fork and it's fine. Anyway, it is delicious. Alex gave it a 10 out of 10. Not sure if we can trust him because he gives everything <laughs> a 10 out of 10, especially pertaining to brownies. But this is delicious. I am excited to eat it. We are having people over for dinner, so we're all going to enjoy this for the dessert. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me. I'm trying to be quiet, Alex is on the phone. So if you want to, subscribe, put a little happy in your day. I'll see you next time, bye.